Hi everyone, it's Kathleen. We are back now to glue our fabric hinges onto each individual page. All of the hinges are going to be Tim Holtz fabric. That fabric and, whoa, and this fabric of Tim Holtz. I have cut them, the not cut, I have torn them into strips that are, they're three inches wide. And I have already torn them, so I can just show you each individual page as we are going to glue the hinges onto the pages. On the outside of my book, instead of using a fabric hinge, you're gonna need one piece like this. If you don't have this, this is a needlepoint canvas. If you don't have needlepoint canvas, denim, linen, a little heavier weight fabric would do. Even a heavier weight cotton would do. This is three inches wide by eight and three quarter inches tall. I have used a glue stick and just ruched, ruched some cheesecloth on the top. That's the same measurement as this needlepoint canvas. I had this pre-done already. This is the last one of the ones that I had pre-done. I collect vintage or try to purchase vintage, vintage pieces, tablecloths, runners, and I'm gifted lots as well. So this is, I don't know if you actually call it hardanger or whether it's just a um, cut work of some sort. It's not crocheting and it's not knitting. It's cotton and it's a piece. The measurement is a three inch square on a diagonal. And I have sewn this with the sewing machine right to the top. I've had this for a while. I want to incorporate that in this journal. This is going to be my outside spine. So let's take our first hinged, not the outside spine, the outside hinge. So let's take this first hinged piece, my first page and my last page. And that's how I lay them on the hinges. The first page, if you were to be reading your book, this is how the book will be sitting. First page and it flips open. You'll have to leaf through your pages and then that will be the last page, the outside page of your journal. I want the, um, I want this to be, how wide is this? I said it was three inches and I am going to, let's see, what's the number on this? Three quarters of an inch and let me see if this is three quarters of an inch. I want to see what it looks like on the front. I want it just to go up to that image. So for me, this image is approximately just under three quarters of an inch, just over half an inch. So I am going to center this page top to bottom on my, on this canvas spine piece. So let's find the top. Can you see the bottom? Yes, you can. So for me, this is, I'm going to center it in the nine inch section. So I, nine inch height, even though this is eight and three quarters. So I'm just moving it up. So I know it's centered from that bunny rabbit all the way down to my line. So this piece here, I want to center top to bottom. And if I put it here, I have two inches and two inches. So that's perfect. And I want to tuck this under right like that. So let's get some glue on there. And I'm just going to use a glue stick. Right now we're going to temporarily, well, we're going to attach the hinges with a glue stick. 
then I will go and I will sew them on. So right now we are going to glue on every single hinge to the two pieces of paper to make our page in the book. So again, if I have, if it's like this, I know that it's centered top to bottom and I want to just tuck this underneath. And I'm going to butt my canvas right up to this image. And I might have to hold this with, I'm going to use paper clips for now because it's not going to be totally glued. This canvas is not like a paper which sticks automatically. So I'm just going to have it held on with those clips for now. I will be going on my sewing machine after I'm finished gluing all of this with you. I will be double stitching on my hinges. I always do that. I, I like to do that. So I'm going to flip this over so it's like you're reading your book and center it again top to bottom. This is how this page will sit in our book when it's closed. It'll be like that. So I want to lay this page on top of here. So let's lay it on the back page. If this is about half an inch, approximately half an inch onto the page is half an inch onto this needlepoint canvas, I'm going to have this one on, where would half an inch go? Half an inch would be about like that. Let's do this one because it's a heavier piece. Let's go three quarters of an inch. So I'm going in a little bit deeper, three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to need a glue stick all along here. This, this piece, this back page, is going to be very, very hard on my sewing machine, but I like the way it's going to look, so I'm going to do it really, really hand slow, slowly by hand on there. So here we have it. I'm centering this page top to bottom. There's just a slight bit overhang. And I want to use, again, paper clips just to hold. I'm sliding it down. You may not see it, but I'll bring it up. So I'm just hang attaching the paper clips so it just holds in place while it dries or until I get to the sewing machine. So I want to flip it over to show you. This is what the outside of our journal, it'll, it'll be sewn with twine. And this will be, the signatures will be sewn in with twine is what I mean. And then the hinges will be double stitched on with a sewing machine. So I'm going to lay this and I'm going to be stacking the pages one on top of the other, just like this. I'm going to set it to the side and we're going to continue going. This is the next page. So if you read the book, it'll be like this in the book. I want to see this beautiful fabric on top of the craft paper when you open it up. And then this is the second last page in, the, in your journal. And it's going to be glued onto that fabric hinge. So you'll see this beautiful piece of fabric on there. So let's lay it down. Move them both to the sides and let's move our, you see how I said it was a three inch piece of fabric? If I cut exactly on the three inch mark, when you tear it and remove some of the threads, it's going to be just a hair narrower than the three inches. How do I know how long to make my hinge? There's different schools of thought. You can see how... My end page is taller 
my front page or my second page is smaller or shorter. So I, up to the first, up to the half, first half of my book, I'm going to be using, my rule of thumb is the shorter piece of paper, I'm going to extend slightly, about a quarter of an inch taller and longer than the height of this page. It may even be a little bit longer, maybe half an inch. So let's center this. Are we in frame? We are. I'm centering my fabric, fabric hinge, and that's why I love working on a mat because I can see, I don't have to measure. And I am going to be laying down at the, at the, I'm going to go in and at this one inch from the right side, I'm going to lay it down and I'm going to go one inch from the other side and lay it down. So let's get our glue stick, attach the glue. The glue temporarily holds it in place. If you were working with fabric, you'd be pinning it on. But because we're working with a journal page, we are going to use glue. And I'm centering, I'm following this one in, this line to make sure that I'm going in. It's about three quarters of an inch or not quite one inch because you could see how my bit is frayed here. I'm following that line. So I'm leaving myself a one inch gap. This piece, we're going to invert it on the back and add a glue stick on the back of that page. And we are going to make sure this is the craft is straight. And I'm going to center this top to bottom on the hinge. Make sure it sticks up the same amount top and the same amount bottom over the edge. And then I'm going to place it down. When it dries, and you'll see it all stitched and sewn, it's going to look so beautiful in your book. So I'm going to leave it like this and place it on top of my page that I've just done. And we keep working all the way down. So I my next page folded in the book will look like this. It's your two pieces of paper sandwiched between the hinge, but you're leaving a one inch portion in between. You could leave a little bit or you could leave a lot. I'm leaving, leaving a lot. So let's place this down. The fabric hinge, making sure the writing is right side up. I'm centering it in that little grid there. And this is my front page that needs to be inverted and glued on here. And again, it's about, let's say half an inch. It's about half an inch taller and longer than the actual page. Then there's this page. This is a more jagged end. Oh, I have to use that one because it's a, for my bag, it's doubled. So I'm going to, I am going to stick this one down. So let's flip it upside down, add our glue and place it, making sure that your fabric hinge is centered. And I'm going to follow that, this grid line. So I'm making my space in between my two pages one inch. I want to make sure that it's the same distance above the hinge and below the hinge. And I don't know if you've noticed, but one page when we lay them down, one will be white and one will be or an off white and one will be craft. So this will be put on here because that's the front of it. So we need to invert it and apply our glue stick and hold that down and make sure it's centered top to bottom along and leave a one inch gap. When it's closed, this is what the page will look like. We're not finished embellishing the craft portion because I need to see the pattern of paper that I have 
oops, I have to make sure I don't make this full. So this is how it will be this next page. So I'm placing the fabric down, making sure the fabric is so it's right side up so I can read the writing, centering it. And again with the, the, oh, why did I do that? It's just, it's reading like this. So let's, this is the more flatter edge. I'm going to put the flatter edge on the fabric because I like to see the more crooked portage portion of the paper. And this is the, out of these two pieces of paper, this is the shortest one. So uh, that's where I measure the height of my hinge. And it's about, oh, about half inch taller and higher and lower than the page. So let's invert this page, apply a glue stick. Is that centered? Yes. And line it up with the line. So I know I have a one inch spine and I see that it is not quite even. So let's do that again. Glue stick is forgiving. You can take it on and off. So this page will be put here. Let's flip it upside down. Attach our glue stick and hold line up with my mat so my page will look like that i'm going to open it up and place it on top of my other one get my next page sure our hinge is the correct reading way. Turn the page and each one of these are going to be glued on top so we can start. And again, this is the short of these two pieces of paper. This is the shorter one. So this is where I measure the half inch from the height of my fabric hinge. So let's Put the glue on one side. Making sure it's centered top to bottom, leaving a one inch gap between the two pieces of paper. Center. that I saw it moved a little bit. Glues on that side of the paper, leave a one inch space and centering it top to bottom. It's going to be nice once we add in the lace fabric embellishments. So let's place that down, make sure our hinge is readable, put it in our little quadrant. This page will be here. This page will be here. So let's flip this, add the glue. Is it centered in our little quadrant? Yes, it is. Leave, leave a one inch gap, turn this upside down, apply the glue, center it top to bottom and leave a one inch space. Beautiful. Our next page. Oh, sometimes it's just hard to gather <laughs> that, that, and my back page like this. I'm 
making sure our fabric is readable, centered in that three inch quadrant. This is the page, turn it, and this is the page. I'm going to flip it, add my glue. Whoopsie, glue stick is quite moist, which is good because it will stick better to the fabric. Check, making sure it's centered, going along that line. Centered top to bottom. Flip this, add glue, hold, and I see it's not straight. I'm lining it up with that line, the centering top to bottom on the hinge, and leaving a one inch gap. Take our hinge, make sure we can read it, put it in our quadrant. Okay, I, this is a flatter end for me, so I want to glue that down. So let's turn it upside down. Center it top to bottom. And this one, upside down, glue stick. Make sure that's lined up straight center top to bottom leave a one inch space very pretty next make sure we can read our writing on the fabric, center it in our quadrant. Oh, nope, it's like this. Just a moment. Why? Okay, well, that is right. It's on this side. But, okay, so it's going to go like this, because I want to see that open. So it's going to go like this. I'm going to invert it. Making sure it's centered. Follow the line and center top to bottom. And this piece, I'm going to invert. Add glue, make sure that's straight, center it top to bottom. And you'll notice that I, I used this piece because this is in that we're still, when we lay our sheets on top of each other, this is still in the first half of the book. That's in the second half of the book. So in the first half of the book, I want to make sure that all the hinges extend beyond that first page. Beautiful. Page opens up like that. The back. Oh, it's going to be beautiful when we attach some things on here. Next one, next one's going to sit like this, 
make sure our we can read the words on the fabric center it in our little quadrant top to bottom this is the page and this is the page perfect let's I don't like to see that little bit, so I'm going to stick. It's part of my paper bag. I'm going to stick it. Oh, but I, oh shoot. I I wanted a flatter top and I like an irregular bottom, so I'm gonna have to glue it that way. Centered in our quadrant. Centered top to bottom and up to that line leaving a one inch gap. Flip this upside down. Oh, look at how crazy I sent that one. Let's center this. And center top to bottom and leave an inch. Very pretty. Make sure you can read the writing if there is any on your fabric. at top to bottom and within that three inch spine bit. This is how it'll sit. And flip this at the glue. Hold my fabric hinge center top to bottom along that line. And I like the more ragged edge on that side, so I'm going to glue that down. I'm going to glue the straighter edge to the fabric and have the more jagged end on the outside because I like that. Make sure that my page was straight. Center the brown, the craft one, top to bottom, and leave a one inch gap. Gosh, that's beautiful. Love that. Papers are really pretty. And make sure our fabric is right side up so you can read it. down. Oops, that's not centered. Hold it down, center top to bottom, and place along that line. And this one, this one needs stitching in it. You'll see how much nicer to my eye it looks after it's stitched. If you don't have a sewing machine, that's fine. You can either hand stitch it or you can just leave it glued, whatever you prefer. It's because I've said I love the way stitching looks. I go and I have a sewing machine and I like to use it. So there we are. Getting close to the end. This is a colorful hinge. Fibers. And again, you can see the difference. This, this is the taller page, but I have made the hinge a half inch or a quarter of an inch taller than 
this page because it's still in the first, when you hold, read the book, this is still in the first half of the signature. And I wanted it to be, that my I wanted my fabric hinge to be as high as the first half of the pages. Center this. Line it up with that line. Leave a one inch space. Boy, my glue. Look at that glue. And we are going to hold that down. Center top to bottom. Leave a one inch space. Place it down. and this is the center page this is the center of our signature the center of our signature okay the center is this envelope page we are going to be creating something to go inside here it's I called it an envelope that's wrong it's a po a pocket page I will be sewing those ends closed. Right now we can even take our glue stick and just glue along the edge. It will be sewn. So we'll have a little pocket in here and this will sit this way and that will sit on here this fabric is okay what can i show you that i have two kinds of tim holtz fabric i'm going to say this is the more yellow fabric i only used a piece for the center here for this yellow fabric if you don't have two kinds of fabrics that's fine just use this one It'll work equally as well, but I'm going to put that like this, center it top to bottom, and let's add the glue. Making sure it's in the quadrant up to that line. our next page and we are going to hold this down center it top to bottom and leave a one inch gap now I wonder should I put another piece on here because it's the center yay or nay Where is, where are my leftover bits? I've got these, these leftover bits. That's too long. Let's have a look at this. Center in our signature. Do I want that there? I am going to put it only because I know this is my center of my signature. I like the way this pattern paper, sorry, the pattern hinge look, so I'm just going to run some here and there. So I'm going to center this. Hopefully it'll be the same distance on this little piece. Okay, so I'm going to go off camera right now and I am going to sew all my hinges on. This is how we look so far. We'll be back. Oh, so I, I said I'm going to stitch, double stitch, 
on each of these hinges. Every single page, every page. This is the center, center pocket page. I know that I have to double stitch my pocket closed and I'm going to double stitch. Now if this is the back half of my book because this is the center of my signatures, I am going to double stitch, double stitch, double stitch all the way to the end double stitch. Hopefully I can double stitch on this heavy, heavy, heavy paper. If not, we'll have to figure something else out. So off I go to the sewing machine and we'll be back in the next video.